Hey everyone, Kestrel here. Today I'm going to show you how I use clipping masks in Adobe Illustrator to combine different photographs to make a composite image that helps me visualize a new quilt idea. So let's get started. What you're seeing on the screen right now is Adobe Illustrator. and I've made a new file that we're going to be working in today with a 25 inch square artboard. So whenever I'm working in Illustrator, I always want to make sure that my artboard is the same size as the finished quilt result. I want to be working at a one-to-one -one scale. So the artwork, the digital artwork, needs to be as big as the finished quilt will be. So in this case, I'm going to plan to make a 25-inch square artwork. Now I've pre-selected some images, all of which are available on unsplash.com, which is a free photo site. I will provide links to all of these photos for you if you want to download and play around with what we're going to do today. But basically, we're going to work with this photo, we're going to work with this photo, and then we're going to put a new background behind the two. And I'm not sure which background is going to work precisely, so we're just going to give them a shot. But these are the five photos that we're going to be playing around with today in Illustrator. To begin, we need to get our photos in Illustrator, and you can do that with a simple drag and drop, or you can go up to File Place. So if you want to place a photo, you would go up to File Place, click and then navigate to wherever it's located on your desktop or you can drag and drop and just bring them in like this. So I'm just dragging out of my file browser and bringing them into the working file here. Okay so for now I'm just going to stick all of these ocean photos off to the side. I'm not sure which one we're going to want to work with. The two that I do know we want to work with are these two. And my idea is we're going to have this mountain kind of over here on the left, and it's going to sweep down to the right, and then we'll put these trees over here in the foreground. So we're going to end up with this nice curve, I'm thinking. Let's try it out. So I know my, my artboard is 25 inches tall. Let's make this picture 25 inches tall. And when you have it selected with, I'm using my primary selection tool, just the regular selection tool, a single left click will select the object and then you know it's selected because it has this bounding box around it. And you can either use the transform panel, which is here. You can also get it, if you don't have the transform panel open, you can go to window and then come down to transform and that will open this panel. Or you can use the transform controls that will appear along the top of your screen. It's just two different places for the same, the same control. But basically we want the width and the height and we want to set the height to 25 and make sure this lock, you want to make sure that it's turned on because that will constrain the proportion and whenever we set the height to be 25, the width will change also. And then I want to align this photograph to my artboard, which you can use these align controls at the top of the screen or you can come over here to the align panel, which again you can find under the window drop down, align. I want to make sure that we are aligning to the artboard and then I'm going to align left and align bottom. All right, so we've got about half the picture right now is this photograph. We've enlarged it enough to take up a little more than half of our artboard. Well, so that's a good start, but the problem is I need a square quilt. You know, I'm designing a square, <laughs> a square piece of artwork, so all of this gap over here needs to be filled in. This, my thought was to have this pine tree kind of over here in the corner, so it would be like something really in the foreground, and then the, uh, the rocky cliff would stretch off back into the distance. So we're going to do that. And first I'm going to enlarge this pine tree a little bit. So I'm going to left click, and do you see how the picture is stretching like that? If I hold shift, that will constrain the sides and force it to stay in scale. So I'm going to enlarge it about to there. Let's see how that goes. Okay, now we need to start adding some clipping masks. A clipping mask can be a basic shape, you know, a rectangle, ellipse, polygon, star. You can use any basic shape to make a clipping mask, or you can draw your own shape, which is what we're going to be doing today. I'm actually just going to use the pen tool, which is this tool, 
the pen tool or P on your keyboard. Uh, let me zoom in. Oh, and at any time you can hold space down and it'll give you the little hand tool and then you can click and drag your artwork around. I'll be doing that a lot today, probably. <laughs> okay, so now what I'm going to do with the pen tool is just start clicking along the edge. Oh, I already don't like it. <laughs> Hit escape to cancel at any time. And then I don't like, I don't, I don't like that shape. So I don't want to keep all of these little flowers. So we're going to start this again. I'm just going to delete that. I also forgot I want to turn off the fill. And I'm going to change the outline to something really bright. Let's do a blue just so I can see it. Okay, let's start again. So single left click to begin. And then you really do not need to be precise. This is just to kind of give us an idea of what we're looking at. We do not need to get into every single nook and cranny, but we're just gonna click to add nodes and kind of loosely follow the outline of whatever shape we want to kind of silhouette. Just gonna go around our whole pine tree. The key to making a clipping mask is whatever the shape is, the only requirement is that it's closed, which means there's no beginning or end. Every point connects to another point, which is, uh, it's important, but it may require an extra step here at the end just to close off our shape. Because right now, this shape that, that I'm clicking and adding more points to, this is considered an open path, not a closed path, because it has a definite start and stop. Like the new point that I put down, every new point is the new end point, and then we have the starting point over here at the beginning. A closed path has no start or end. Every point connects to another point. And so we may have to manually. I forget if this tool will automatically close the path, and if it doesn't, we'll need to manually go and do that. Now, something else that I'm doing is just single left clicking to place all of these points. You do not have to single left click. You can actually left click and drag to make a curve. You see how I'm starting to get some curves down here? I don't normally worry about this for my own picture designs because I again I'm just doing I just make these composite images in Illustrator using these photos and clipping masks to give myself an idea of how these of how my artwork is going to look. It's more meant to be a visual guide. But you can make curves as you go if you so desire. Okay, so now I'm actually okay, I'm gonna hit escape. I started off to the side here and I actually didn't want to do that. So I actually want my my points to join right here where these two lines are overlapping. So I need my direct selection tool. I'm gonna delete this point and then select this new endpoint and just move it back so that it's now intersecting this path. And I'm gonna get this one and bring it down. Okay, so I have two points on top of each other here, but they're not actually connected yet. I'm going to start a drag, a, drag a selection box off to the side and select both. Now I do also have the photo selected right now. So I need to hold shift and click once on the photo to deselect it. And then I have some options that show up up here because the only thing I've selected right now is two endpoints, two points. This is now available, this connect selected endpoints. So that's what we want to do to make a closed path. And now these two endpoints are one and the same. So I move them, both sides of the line are moving together because those two endpoints have been joined into one. So now we have a closed shape and we can actually make our clipping mask. So to make the clipping mask, we want to select the outline that we just drew with the main selection tool. Hold down shift and select the photo. You can either right click 
come down to make clipping mask or you can go up to object and then come down to clipping mask make either way will function the same and all it's going to do is use the new line that has to be on top of the photo it's going to use that as the new outline and hide everything else that is outside that closed shape. So what we've got here is our silhouetted tree. Now this tree is looking a little bit small to me. So I'm gonna use my main selection tool to select it. So I'm, I have the photo and the, like the clipping mask as a whole selected. And I'm just gonna come up here to the top corner and hold down shift. We're gonna enlarge it a little bit. That's feeling a little better. But it is making me feel like I need to shift this photo to the left down a bit. Yeah, let's go with that. We don't need all of this grass that's down here. And actually, I'm not loving this horizon line either. And we need to put a new ocean back there anyway, because th this one isn't big enough. Doesn't, you know, it doesn't cover the full background. Okay, so let's do another clipping mask for this background picture with the rocky cliff. And this time, I'm going to show you a slightly different way to do it. You can, you know, draw with the pen tool if that's your comfort level. Honestly, that's how I do it most of the time. But this time we're going to start with a rectangle tool and I'm going to draw a rectangle from this bottom corner and just take it out to the left and right as far as I need it to go. And now I'm going to use the pen tool again, this time the add point, add anchor point tool, which is actually not the pen tool, it's the add anchor point tool, but the icon is the same as a pen tool, it just has a little plus up in the corner. And I'm going to add a bunch more icons, a bunch more uh, points. So let's add a couple up here. And we'll add a couple along the side. Yeah, if we need more, we can get more. And now I'm going to get my direct selection tool, which is this one. And we're just going to move these points kind of along the cliff. Just moving them into place. We might need a couple more. Yeah, we're gonna. All right, so let me get that plus back again. We'll need one there. A couple along here. Back to direct selection tool. Let's move these into place. There we go. Okay, let's try that. So I'm gonna get my main selection tool. Oh, and we didn't have an outline on that shape. So it's not there visually right now, but if I hover over it, we can see that that line is still there. It just means we don't have a stroke applied, so we couldn't see it. So I have it selected. I'm going to hold shift, select the photo in the background. This time I'm going to right click and make clipping mask. Okay, good. It is in front of my pine tree though. I want the pine tree to be in front. So I'm going to select the pine tree, come up to object, down to arrange, bring to front. Good. Yeah, that's looking good. I'm not liking this hard edge here. Let's zoom in, see what we can do. I might just continue this rock over a little bit. So let's do that. Let's just put us like a solid filled section here to kind of finish off the shape of the rock. So I've got my pen tool. I'm just gonna kind of draw a shape. And we'll put it behind the photo, which is why I have this overlap here. All right, so I've got a close. Is that a close path? Yeah, okay, so that's fun. If you were using the pen tool, it looks like if you click on that on the very first point that you put down, it'll actually automatically close it for you. So that's fun. All right, for a fill, I'm going to get my eyedropper tool, which is this one. And I'm actually just going to color pick part of the rock and then we want this to go let's see I'm gonna cut it command X whoops command X okay 
uh, Control X for those of you on Windows. I'm going to select this photograph of the pine, the palm, the pine tree, palm tree. Gosh. <gasps> okay. And then Command B or Control B, for those of you on Windows, will paste behind it. So it just moved this little shape back a place. And then if I zoom out, now it's kind of like intentionally finished off. So it looks good. I'm not loving the height similarity between these two. I think one needs to be taller than the other. Let's shrink our trees just a tad. That feels better. Yeah, they just need to, they needed a different height. Okay, and then last but not least, we got to put a sky behind these two. So let's try this one. And I'm just going to resize it. As needed. That's pretty good. I even like the birds. Okay, so now this one doesn't go all the way over either. I'm actually just going to copy and then Command F to paste in front. Slide it over. And now oops, I'm going to use my align tool to align it up to the left. And now I'm just going to move it to the back. Object, arrange, send to back. Yeah. So, you know, there's there's this line up here still. It's not perfect. But it's it's really not too bad. And if we wanted to fix that, what we could do is take this image, object, transform, reflect, uh, horizontal or vertical is what we want, so we're going to hit OK. And now if we slide this all the way over, because the image is, is a reverse of itself now, you can, that, that part of like it's the same part of the photo touching itself. If I slide these up, you'll see what I mean. You see the photo is just a mirror image of itself now. And so that's why the line has disappeared, because it's just like the same part of the photo. But we want to clip off this part to the side. So let's make a clipping mask. Let's just put the whole background in it. Because you can put more than one thing in a clipping mask too. So I've got a new line drawn. It has no stroke, so we can't see it. But I know it's there. So I've, used a, I've drawn a selection box using my selection tool. I'm going to right click, make clipping mask, and that's just going to put both photos in there. And then I need to send them to the back. So select it and then object, arrange, send to back. And voila, there we go. Okay, I'm going to save. Make sure you save. And then what if we wanted to try one of these other photos? What would that look like? Okay, well, I actually already have a perfectly good clipping mask. So I'm just going to use it. I'm going to take this photo, Command X on my clipboard, and then go into isolation mode inside this clipping mask of the sky. And to do that, we're just going to double click on one of these photos. Okay, so we can see that the other stuff around this photo has grayed out and the whole clipping mask is now visible even though it was hidden by some of the other photos. And we also have this gray bar along the top. So this is how we know that we're inside isolation mode. So we're editing, we can do whatever we want to these photos inside the clipping mask without changing anything else about the picture or the outer boundary of the clipping mask unless we click on that specifically but we can move these photos as we want. Or what we're gonna do right now is paste that other photo in place. So I hit Command V to paste the photo and it's off to the side. We can't actually see it right now because it's not part of the visible area of the clipping mask. But if I drag it over, now it becomes visible. And I'm just gonna put it, I don't know if I'm gonna keep it or not, so I'm just gonna put it on top of these other photos that I'm using and enlarge it a lot. And then let's see how this looks in our scenery. So to exit clipping mat or to ex exit the isolation mode, you can just double click off to the side or click this arrow to go back 
you know, one level at a time, but double clicking off to the side will jump out of all of it together. That's kind of peaceful too. Honestly, I don't know if I have a preference. I like the birds in the other one because that implies that there is some life, but they're probably too big. The scale is because we had to enlarge that background. The scale of the birds is probably off. This seems, this seems quite nice, although these waves are going in the wrong direction. You would expect the waves to be coming the opposite way because they would be coming into the shore that's on the left. So what if we reverse this image? So I'm back in isolation mode. I've selected the photograph. Actually, let me show you something else you can do. You don't have to go into isolation mode if you want to edit a photo that's in a clipping mask. You can get your direct selection tool, click on the photo, Okay, so now I have this background photo selected, right? I'm going to go up to Object, Transform, Reflect, Vertical, that's correct. And now I can move it. Yeah, see, that's making a little, that makes more sense to me. Those waves are now coming in towards where we would expect the shoreline to be. So I'm, I'm kind of liking that. Now, compositionally, I'm not loving, I mean, we, I always like to pay attention to the rule of thirds, right? I don't think we're going to use this one. I'm going to delete that photo. Okay, I always like to pay attention to the rule of thirds because that's one of the, something that I found to be really important when making my compositions. And it's, you know, a design principle for a reason, using the rule of thirds. What the rule of thirds means is that you want your, your main objects, your main alignment of subject matter to be on the third, either on a, like a, the third rule or like in a, a corner where the two thirds overlap. So what we have now is a prox is about, we're, we are using the rule of thirds. This tree is perhaps a little bit too far to have it really on the third. We would want it right there. Uh, but it's it's not too bad over to the side. If it if it felt a little crowded, we could move it a little bit to the left. This cliff though is taking up pretty much one the whole left third of the picture. So that's you know we've that's working for us. The tree, like I said, the tree's not too bad. Really, this right here would be closer to the the right third marker. But it's not too bad being further over to the side like that. So I'm going to leave that. What I'm not sure about is this horizon line because this horizon line where the, you know, the farthest out where we can see the edge of the ocean meeting the sky right now is half is on a half. It's, it's equally dividing our picture from top to bottom. I'm not sure about that. We would probably want to move it down like this and have more sky because now that's close to the lower third. I'm going to, I'm going to duplicate this artboard and then maybe mess around with this picture a little bit more just before we end the video. So I'm going to get my artboard tool down here, which I have set to hotkey W. I believe that's a custom hotkey. I'm not sure what it is by default, but I'm pretty sure I set W just so that it's easy to hit with my left hand. And then I'm going to click, hold down shift and hold down alt. That's going to duplicate my artboard. All right, so now the image on the left, I want to delete this picture because we have those two other, that other ocean picture behind, and I want that to be visible here on the left. So I'm going to use my left click to select, or I'm sorry, my left click, yeah, left click with the direct selection tool to select this picture on the left and then just hit delete. Okay, and now we've got our birds back. And now let's look at these two because this, this picture with the scale wise, these birds are way too big as much as I like them. So that would need to be addressed if we were moving forward with making this into a quilt. But for now, it's fine. This ocean is on the lower third. This ocean is on the halfway line. I think I prefer the lower third. It just has a more peaceful feeling to it, I think. Although I like the color of the one on the right better. Well, you know, you would you would need to make a if you were going to make this into a quilt, you would need to make a distinction about how you want 
you know, which, which horizon line you like the best. But I, at this point, am leaning towards the lower horizon line with the coloration of the one on the left. It matches the cliffs a little bit more. It has a little more blue in it. And so the cliffs feel a little bit more natural than they do in the one on, I'm sorry, did I say left? I like the left horizon line. I like the color on the right because the cliffs feel a little bit more natural. So you, you can decide for yourself which one you think works the best. But this is the basic process that I use to make a composite image. And I just kind of build it the same way we did right here. I have an idea in my mind. I go and find reference photos that will that I think will work. Some of them do, some of them don't. Once I start putting them together, and we I just make this compo make a composite that is then easy for me to visualize and and start drawing the finished template. So well, thanks for watching today. I hope that this process of using clipping masks and Illustrator to build composites of a of an idea will be helpful. As always, if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. I'll be more than happy to help explain anything that I might have missed or that you found confusing. So thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.